Thank you, Minister. Mr. Tabari, you have seven minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Minister, uh, for being here in front of the uh, committee today, and I uh, congratulate you uh, on your new role. Um, I just want to mention in your, uh, in your statement here, I'm just going to read back what you said. Reduce application for processing time, improve department services to our clients, and less competi uh, complicate and more timely for all applicants in, uh, in applications. Um, I would like to focus on the global skills strategy, which is a part of the department's priorities. Um, I'm from the Kitchener, Cambridge, Waterloo area. And many of the high-tech companies as well un universities rely on attracting uh, global talent. Um, just to give you a little bit of figures about the high-tech sector, um, this is uh, stats from 2015. There's 1,845 new technology startups uh, has formed, uh, raising $650 million in investment in a region just over 500,000. Um, so I've, I've sat with uh, a lot of... Um, uh, uh, t officials in Communitech and around the high-tech sector, and their main issue was um, about getting global talent and about getting these skills in our region that is uh, expanding rapidly, but without getting this talent, uh, we won't be able to further expand and get that talent and knowledge. So could you elaborate on how the global skills strategy will benefit Canada in terms of access to global talent, and what positive outcomes do you see as a result? Thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a really important question. Uh, as you know, uh, Canadian workers and Canadian companies have uh, some of the best uh, skilled workers in the world who are already here. Uh, but in addition to that, for their future growth and their development and their innovation, they always look to, in addition to hiring Canadians, sometimes they need to attract the best and the brightest from the world. Uh, and those folks actually, in addition uh, to them coming and, and having a job with the Canadian company, in turn create jobs for Canadians. And so it's, it's important in the global race for talent for Canada to be uh, posi well positioned in that race and to continue to have system mechanisms in place to, to facilitate the attraction and retention of that talent. And global skills strategy is, is the exact uh, mechanism that we need to, to, to make it easier for companies that are desperate for that global talent, talent to be able to get them to Canada quickly. So as part of the global skills strategy, we're setting an ambitious two-week standard for processing visas and work permits for low-risk, high-skill talent. In addition, the, the department will develop a dedicated service channel to help meet the foreign talent needs of companies seeking to make a significant investment in Canada. Uh, we also, uh, in, in addition to that, we also plan to introduce a new work permit exemption for very short duration work terms, uh, 30 days or less, uh, and this will uh, help uh, sectors such as university-based research uh, sectors to attract uh, people on a temporary basis to, to, to enable them to get here quickly, uh, assist the uh, university or the company with the work that needs to be done, and then go back uh, to, their, to their original country. You kind of touched on my, my second question, which is um, uh, when I sat down with these officials, they said that it's, it's very complicated and timely um, to process uh, an application to get these, this global talent here. Um, what they've mentioned uh, in these roundtables is that if they're trying to get um, a, a top official in the, in the high-tech sector in, in Singapore or, or in Eastern Asia, um, a lot of times it's, it's taking too long to process their application and they're being grabbed by uh, other areas, whether it's Australia, whether it's uh, the UK. Um, uh, can you just elaborate a little bit more on the two-week standard for processing visas and how, do you, uh, how will that be achieved and how that will benefit? Uh, so before I get into that, I'll, I'll talk about the, the overall strategy behind this initiative. It's, it's to facilitate not just faster, uh, processing for global talent, but more predictable processing, so that companies can know what the application process is like and have more predictability to the process. And the two-week standard is what it is. It, it is a goal uh, to have that ambitious two-week standard for processing the visas and the work permits for uh, low-risk, high-skilled high, high uh, workers. And I can have... Uh, 
Your sure, we can. Uh, thanks, Minister. I'll, uh, just by way of introduction, I'll say a couple of words, but I think Mr. Manicom can, uh, can fill out the details. As the Minister said, um, the Global Skills Strategy is aligned with the government's innovation agenda. Um, there are a number of elements uh, in the Global Skills Strategy that are intended to spur innovation, spur development, uh, and, spur, and spur employment. The details, the exact details are being uh, worked out right now between officials and various stakeholders in terms of which, pr which professions, under what circumstances. But the three key elements with respect to the two-week standard, uh, the dedicated service to help firms trying to scale up, and, um, and the new work permit exemption for short-term stays uh, are the key elements of the Global Skills Strategy. Uh, the further details, as I mentioned, will be crafted um, over the coming months uh, with, uh, with key stakeholders. With that, Mr. Manicom, if there's any further details you'd like to provide. I think my minister and Mr. Wex have covered most of it. We've been in uh, very intensive consultations across the country, um, including in the Toronto Waterloo Corridor. I was in British Columbia last week at BC Tech, the, the big, the big uh, fair uh, there. Um, we are designing a package of proposals that we hope to implement in June. And at that time, we do indeed intend that all high-skilled, low-risk uh, work permits will be done within two weeks as one of the key services. Um, the whole objective here is to make sure that when companies need to grow talent or invest in Canada, access to the skills they need is not an obstacle, and that we therefore can uh, grow these sectors in Canada, attract investment, and permit the upscaling that we need. It's, it's great to hear that because I, this is something I can send back to, to my constituents who are, who are looking for this, uh, for this global talent, and to have that two-week period. Um, I, I think it will be very uh, a positive thing and it will be uh, very well accepted. Continuing on with uh, jobs and investment uh, in, in the high-tech sector, I know I'm pushing this a lot, um, but I, I really want to focus on, uh, on, on it attracting investment. And um, just to give you a number here, um, Communitech has hired in the startup uh, sector, hired um, in the high-tech sector, sorry, hired 2,782 new employees. Um, I understand that we are developing uh, um, uh, a service channel to help attract investment to meet the needs of companies seeking to, to, uh, uh, to develop significant uh, job-creating ventures in Canada. Can you just elaborate on that for me? Sure. We're working closely with uh, the new Invest in Canada office that's planned at Global Affairs, with provinces, territories, with sector councils such as Communitech and others, um, to develop a, a dedicated cadre of staff whose job will be to work with companies who are planning to invest in Canada or to upscale their operations in Canada, to sit down with them at the front end of the process to make sure that they have the staff they need to establish, ramp up, and uh, make their operation in Canada flourish. So that's, that's the concept. We'll work both with um, objective criteria on the amount of investment, but also with referral partners to make sure that those um, exciting companies that look small now but will become big later can also have the, uh, the dedicated handling uh, in, by our staff.